so we have the targeting phase then we have uh, the action right and here's a a great detail they, they add that you were mentioning like the camera gets a little delay yeah before impacting yeah so whenever here Noctis throws the the weapon weapon collides and then the phase in in and out happens right mm -hmm. yeah and there is a trail that follows him it's a yeah it's a delayed strike right basically and it sure seems that way because um, yeah here it hit you still you still have like like not this here even though it has already collided but the camera will start moving like a little transition forward and Noctis will not disappear yet. Right. Let's let's see it in slow motion. So the like the frame of the body is still there, but the camera is already move, moving. So it it gives that feeling of delay, right? That makes it feel very good. I remember I have played like five minutes of it in 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 an event. It feels very good. Uh, it's very well made. Yeah, and when the camera, think... oh yes. Uh, I think it worth mentioning before that these kind of systems are extremely hard to make. Uh, we usually call it the three Cs, stand as controller, character, and camera. And it's usually the relationship between the three of, the, of them that will create the total feeling. If you have the camera, but you don't have the controller feel, feeling right on the right time, you're, you lose. If the character doesn't have the right animation, but the controller and the camera is right, then you also lose. So this kind of combat system is actually pretty hard to polish. Uh, maybe we will prototype it faster, but to polish it will be, uh, it, it will take some time. Yeah. And there are a lot of little details, like in the heat, here's a distortion, distortion effect here. The camera shakes around this part of the, of the tray. Well, of the of the attack, yeah, and then there is a little animation of the of the the remaining part of the of the action, right? Of returning to a position where you can attack again. Yes. Uh, it also starts with uh, anticipation. Uh, yeah, it's, and it's pretty much a rule for any kind of mechanic in your game. You want to have some sort of anticipation thing to show that the player something's going to happen. But we will just do it little by little. So with, with what we have analyzed thus far, we can make a little uh, flowchart. So we don't have to keep going back to a video every single time. It's going to be useful to know. And I hope I don't have anything in the whiteboard. There is. So whenever we start, right. we need to be in a targeting uh, like phase. So we start targeting. Then if I'm targeting something that well can be targeted, then we can show the crosscard, right? So here is target. Are you using a tablet? Yes. Damn. That's an upgrade, programmer with a tablet. It has helped me a lot with um, pro problems with the wrist, like having to ex exchange between using a mouse and a tablet really, really relieves my, my fingers too. Because moving the finger up and down, like it's not really a, a comfortable action, uh, at least for me. Like it's probably easier for everyone to hold your fist closed then try to open your fingers as as far as as you can so yeah it it's it's been a blessing having having this tablet and also yeah you can you can draw a lot more easily um well my hand writing is <laughs> it's really not that good uh, that, but... that can help it but yeah, yeah still very nice 
So if the target is, is acceptable, and that's that's what I'm re why I'm reading it also. If it's acceptable, then we can do something here. Yes. And if it's not, then we keep waiting until the targeting is acceptable, right? Or uh, until we leave this targeting phase, but we we don't have to do like uh, too much detail in this in this phase of of making a, a flowchart. So let's go with the target is acceptable. What we do, do we need to do? We need to change the crosshair. And we need to wait for the input. Uh, so input or the warp strike. Whoop. For the warp strike, pressed. And yeah, no, no. No amount of of tabletness can help with my with my writing, but hopefully it's understandable. And here, yeah, I, I just remember I cannot I cannot text here. It's it's easier, either. but yeah, I'll, I'll keep it in mind for for the next for, for the next. <laughs> so if the input has been pressed, then we need to do the warp strike. Warp strike. So doing the warp strike, like has its own steps Be because this is all that we need in order to like start programming right now. Because yeah, you do the warp strike and then it's the end. But the warp strike has like like we said, sub steps, right? Um, and those I do not remember. So let's let's watch it again. Um, yeah, it, it starts by, do, do we want to really throw the weapon? We can add uh, it later also, so let, let's just not sweat yeah, let, let's, the let's details. Let's work on the intention first and then we work on the details little by little. All right. So this here's only visual. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just add it so I don't forget it later. So we throw the weapon. Then... And I'm gonna add some. Ah, okay, no, it's small. We throw the weapon. We make the character uh, have this cool, this cool. How how is this effect called? Like, it's not a fade. Uh, well, this cool material, right? This uh, facing facing out. So character faces out. Then the camera starts moving. That that's the stuff that we're gonna add. Camera goes to target, and then um, the character faces in. Well, character uh, teleports to target, and character faces in. Here we have the camera shake. Camera shake plus every little single detail of the hit. VFX sound effects, uh, etc. So now we have a, a really clear idea of what we want to achieve before starting to program. To program. Uh, this is really important because uh, you may forget, there are a lot of steps here, so it's easy to forget.